Bees were living in this compost bin and I was called to remove them. So I gave the bees some smoke and I got to work. Compost bins like this one are one of the most common places that I get called to remove bees from. These bins are perfectly sized for a hive and they offer insulation and protection from the elements. You can see how the bees are using the bin's ventilation holes as the entrance to their hive inside. These openings are perfectly sized for the bees' little bodies and they make it easy for the bees to defend their hive. You can see that this colony was pretty active and they were bringing in a lot of brightly colored pollen. These bees were also very calm and gentle, so I chose to work without any protective gear because that's just the way I prefer to do bee work if the bees will allow it. This is exactly how the bin looked when I got there. The top of the compost bin was half open and the bees had glued the rest of it down with propolis. Once I broke through the propolis seal that the bees had created, it was time to see the hive and meet the colony. This is always one of my favorite parts of any removal, and inside this bin I found a beautiful hive, and at first glance the colony looked pretty healthy. At the beginning of the hive there was a lot of fresh wax, which you can tell by its bright color, and this meant that the colony was at least healthy enough to be creating wax and expanding their hive. There were also a lot of bees and I could see some older brood comb at the bottom, so I was excited to get to work. After seeing the size of the colony, I got this temporary travel hive and I started removing the hive. Some of the very first pieces of comb that I removed from the outermost parts of the hive were full of fresh honey. So I took a bite and it was delicious. I put the rest of the comb in a feeder inside the new hive so that the bees could have it in their new home. After I finished all of the honey in the comb, I took the beeswax out of my mouth and gave that back to the bees as well. Bees actually use their own saliva and chew up their wax before building with it, so I hoped they wouldn't mind mine too much. Then I got some wooden frames and I started to pull up the next pieces of comb that had fallen to the bottom. The first few pieces of comb I picked up had brood or baby bees in them and they would be extra important for the colony's survival. Here's what some of the pieces of brood comb looked like up close. You can see those spots are actually wax cappings covering the brood or baby bees that are developing inside the cells. And the pieces of comb just kept getting bigger and bigger and they had more and more bees on them the farther into the hive I went. You can see that this piece of comb had a lot of brood on it and it was covered in bees, so that would be really important to the hive and to the colony. This piece also had larvae, eggs, and food on it. So I used my smoker to get the bees out of the way for their safety and for mine. Bees will move away from smoke just like other animals. Most of the time, that's what I'm doing when I'm using my smoker. I'm just trying to get the bees to move around or to get them to go where I want them to go. So after I had given the bees some smoke to clear this piece, I began to cut it down to size so that it would fit into the wooden frames of the new hive. This is actually one of my least favorite parts of the removal process. I just hate cutting through the comb and sometimes the brood or the food that the bees have worked so hard for. But I know that the bees will put it back together in the new hive and they'll be better in a new home than they were in this backyard compost bin. So I just kept cutting through the comb as carefully as I could. Once I made my cut, I gave the bees some more smoke to move them out of the way. Since I had cut almost through the entire comb, it was pretty easy just to tear it in half so it would be down to size and fit into my frames. Then it was time to start putting the pieces of comb into the wooden frames of the new hive. Once I fit the comb into the frame well enough, I secured it into place using rubber bands. The rubber bands will hold everything together until the bees have time to repair the hive themselves in their new home. Once they have put everything back together, they'll actually chew through these rubber bands and drag them out of the hive. I did the same thing with the next piece of comb. These pieces of comb had a lot of things the bees needed. They can also be pretty fragile, so I just try to work as slowly and carefully as I possibly can, which is sort of how you have to do everything in beekeeping. You may also notice that I tend to stay in one place and don't really move around too much. I try to avoid squashing any bees that could be on the ground by taking as few steps as possible. After loosening the next piece of comb, I pulled it up from the bottom of the bin. You can see how it was curved and how the bees built around what was ever inside the bin. You can also see how I'm always looking for the queen. 
although her and her attendants tend to scurry away to a safer, darker place as soon as I start the removal process. She wasn't on this piece, but this piece was full of things the colony needed. So I gave this piece some smoke and I got to work. I tore off a piece of comb that had honey on it and I put it in the feeder. Most of the times, I don't want to put a piece of comb with too much honey on it into a frame like I'm doing here with the brood comb. And that's because if the honeycomb breaks or gets crushed at any point during the transit process, which usually involves a long ride home in the back of my pickup truck, the honey could become a gushing pool at the bottom of the hive, and it can potentially drown a lot of bees. So I have to try to keep the comb with the brood or baby bees on it separate from the comb with a lot of honey on it. The brood comb, like the piece you see here, are arguably the most important parts of the hive to keep intact. If you crush these pieces of comb that have baby bees on them, the baby bees won't survive. But any honey that gets crushed during the removal process or during transit, I can just feed back to the bees. And this is how the inside of the bin was looking after removing a lot of the hive. There was still some comb in it, mostly around the edges and at the bottom, and there were still a lot of bees in there. So I just kept pulling piece after piece of comb out of the hive. Some of the largest pieces of comb were at the bottom, and they weren't being used by the bees anymore. While this comb had a lot of bees on it right now, they weren't actively using the comb to store anything. So I took a second to look for the queen, but I still didn't see her. Then I gave the bees some smoke to encourage them to move off of this piece and to go into their new hive. Pieces like this that aren't being used usually get put into a bucket and kept separate from the rest of the hive. Then I bring the bucket home and I make everything in it available to all the bees in my apiary. After that, any extra comb goes into a solar wax melter so that I can repurpose the beeswax. Every part of the hive is incredibly important, and it's usually something that you or the bees can find a use for. I always try my best to let very little go to waste, really because that's how the bees do it. So after I got all of the bees off of this comb, into a communal comb bucket it went. You can see that the bees were starting to get a bit more active, and there are a lot more bees flying around, especially around the entrance of the hive at the front of the bin. But the bees were still not trying to sting me, so I just kept pulling piece after piece of comb out of the hive while looking for the queen. This piece had a lot of baby bees on it, so I carefully put it into a frame alongside the other ones. The bees will connect everything together and make a solid wall of comb. After I had removed most of the comb from inside the compost bin, it was time to start getting the bees into their new hive. With all the bees on the outside of the box, I thought that there was a good chance I'd find the queen there, but I didn't see her. So I got to work scooping bees off the side of the compost bin. These bees were not stinging me, and it's just my preference to use my hands to scoop the bees if they will let me. I love holding them and it seems like they don't mind it too much either. So with every handful of bees I scooped, I was looking for the queen. And pretty soon, I found her. She was right where I expected her to be, and I saw her reddish-orange abdomen as it caught my eye in the mass of bees. So I put her in a clip to keep her safe. These clips are designed to keep the queen in while letting the other bees who are smaller come and go as they please. I put the queen in the new hive and I got back to work scooping bees. You can see how a lot of the bees are sort of in a big clump on the side of the compost bin. When the colony is all together like this, it makes it easier for me to just pick them up and move them around. They're all sort of joined together and they're trying to work as one. And because they have pretty hard exoskeletons, I can just dump them into their new hive. But despite my best scooping and smoking efforts, these bees weren't really marching into their new hive to follow their queen like they often do. And that's because some of them were swarming. You can see a bunch of bees flying to and from the bin. And if you look in the tree, you'll see a little black spot and that's the swarm. Those bees would not be able to survive long without their queen and their colony. So I knew that they would probably come back on their own. I just waited a few minutes for them and that's exactly what they did. I gave the bees some more smoke to help them move off of the bin and into the box. 
there were still some bees flying around, and I actually had quite a few bees on me. I had been around the bees all day, and I probably smelled a bit familiar to them by now, so I just gave everyone a bunch of smoke. I often have to do this at the end of a removal, just not really realizing how many bees are on me. But honestly, sometimes it makes me feel like they've really accepted me. I waited for as long as I could for more bees to settle into the box, then I closed up the hive. It was getting cloudy and I needed the bees to speed things up, so I sprayed the bin with a special mixture of natural ingredients containing scents that the bees don't like. After waiting as long as I could, I picked up the bees, I loaded them into my truck, and we all drove home and it was another great day of saving the bees.